Good afternoon. Uh, my presentation will be more practical than theoretical, but from time to time I uh, insert some theoretical slides. Uh, I would like to present you uh, the way, step-by-step -step way, how to create a right-sized test database. So first of all, before the practical part, uh, some um, issues or challenges. Uh, uh, if um, company or developers decided to create uh, test data or test um, databases, the challenges are that uh, internally developed applications approach are not much most more effective uh, because it requires a leng lengthy development cycle uh, because if uh, you decide to change the test scenario you should change for example database schema etc and if you create your own test uh, or application for creating test data you should uh, do changes in your application and takes long time. I have experiences with one of my customers who do it like this and every DB schema changes require a couple of weeks to implement only such changes. And you know that if you develop application, changing of database schema is everyday works during the development of application. So you should have dedicated staff uh, who need to understand uh, schema of data, uh, you need to understand uh, the application from creating test data, etc. You should maintain some application and uh, every single application requires specific single application for creation of test data. So all this has influence also on uh, the problem that uh, developers uh, many times uh, doesn't know uh, exact the DB schema which is required to create the right test uh, data to be consistent in data, etc. So, other way, decision can be that we simply clone the full production system as a test data, but if you imagine that production system can have 10, 20, 100 terabyte and you create clone every time. If you want to test something, it's very leng very lengthy, and you will require very large storages, etc. And the last, not least, but last, is that um, if you participate or cooperate with third parties, you need to deliver uh, this test data to third parties. And if your production system con contains sensitive data which is situation for every information system. Every information system contains sensitive data. You should ensure that this private data, sensitive data, won't be delivered or disclosed to third parties. So all these uh, things are very important to resolve. Uh, let's say some blocks uh, how uh, test data management or testing is done practically. So first we create our new application or we modify application, for example, due to some bug or something. We create test environment, but as we said in previously slide, we should create subset of test data, not full set 20 terabytes, etc., but subset, for example, 100 megabytes, which is suitable for testing of our application if we don't for sure uh, test performance, but testing of performance database is other task. Now we are speaking about creating of the new application and testing logic of new application. After creating of test data, we should ensure that our data will be prioritized, so will be uh, mask our sensitive data. Uh, we edit our test data for testing of our application, we start testing, and after testing we compare the changes in database with set of previously used test data. If the changes in data are correct, 
we can go to production or archive all data and we are ready to implement new application. If we found that our data changed by our new application are incorrect, we refresh this data. Important is to have still the same set of this data. We refresh data and we can run again, again, and again. A lot of work, so we need some tool to simplify all these steps. And such tool, I will show you at the end in a very short practical example. But before that, I would like to go step by step how to create uh, our use case. So our use case contains from two production databases. The first is CustDB and second is OrderDB. What is important, two databases are on different platforms, different computers, let's say, because uh, there is many of information systems which are uh, bound some, let's say, for example, personal ID, in our case, customer ID in different systems, but we need to get consistent test data from both databases where only point which give us consistent data are only one single column which is in both platforms. So we can create some general relationship between two databases which is not possible to do on database level because you know that on database level we are able to create uh, referential integrity but referential integrity is not possible to do between two different databases on different platforms. So it's first things which should be done in our uh, test application. We should have well documented and should have defined referential constraint and one relationship between these two databases. It's also a very important thing if you want to create test data from production database, you need to know exactly how relationships in the database are defined, etc. And if these relationships are not defined on database level by referential integrity and are defined only on application level, it's very difficult to find these relationships. So we need to get some other tool to test the data in our database to try find the possible application relationships. Our goal is create two test databases, CASDB test and ORDDB test, together with schema, some subset of the production databases, but both these test databases should be again, um, should have data integrity or preserve data integrity as was between these two production databases. We have some sensitive data, so we should find some way how to mask sensitive data. Sensitive data will be some customer identification, his first name and last name, so all these data uh, should be masked or identified to get our test export test database to third parties. And Customer identification defines the application relationship. So it's the relationship between these two databases. So relationship between databases should be protected. But it's not possible to create a referential constraint because we have two separate databases on two separate platforms. So here is the schema of our production database. The first the database production running, for example, on Linux, contains table of customers, some customer calls, some type of the call, and code table, reference table state, it's called table to this customer. Here is the general relationship with the other system, customer num, which is running on IX, for example, and is the order information system. We have all these items and some other code tables for this. Our goal is create final test environment. It is not visible here, but I slightly shadows the origin tables here, but it's not visible on this uh, screen. But what is important, our test environment will contain subset of tables 
subset will be only customer and code table state. We need to preserve relationship between these two tables and database or the DB test will contains orders and items. It will be our test database. So our goal is create two test databases with subset of DB schema and subset of data. Not to have full 100 terabytes, but for example, uh, hundreds of megabytes. You can see that blue is application relationships and referential constraint <coughs> defined on database level is in brown here. So first, uh, before continuing, um, we should explain what is business object. Uh, business object is a subset of, uh, again something is not displayed correctly, is subset of DB schema uh, which has defined some relationships. So there is relationships among tables, databases, applications, etc. It provides historical reference snapshots of some activity. We have two perspectives, or we can see business objects in two perspectives. The first is business perspective. Object could be payment, invoice, paycheck, or customer record, or order record, as in our case. Or physically, it is logical perspective. Physical perspective can be database perspective. Uh, database perspective is defined as a group of related rows from related tables across one or more applications, databases, with its related metadata. Metadata is information which relationships we have defined in our test schema, etc. So now we will return to our use case and we will define as order record from business perspective this set of data. It is all the record where all the record as data will be defined as some subset of data and we will have some relationships with customers uh, who, for which we have these orders. From database perspective, we have four tables, customer state, orders and items, together with relationships. So there are preferential integrity relationships and application relationships. So now we exactly know the schema which will be used as a schema for our test databases. What is relationships? <coughs> Relationship is defined connection between two rows of two tables that determines the parent or child rows to be processed and or order, order in which they are processed. About processing of roles for test data management, we will be uh, we will speak later. Uh, but um, you know, for sure, databases we have first typical database relationship is a referential constraint which is defined by primary key and foreign key. So foreign key in one table reference to primary key in another table. Parent table must have primary key and is related to foreign key in the child table. And for sure, corresponding columns between primary key and foreign key should have exactly identical data types and attributes. It is not possible to create database referential constraint between integer and car, for example. It is not possible even if in car column are integers, for example. General relationship, on the other hand, is primary key and foreign key uh, defined logically, but from database perspective, primary keys, foreign keys are not required or not defined if our relationship is on application level, as in our case, between two databases. Corresponding columns need not to be identical but must be compatible. So we allowed that one column is integer, second column is character, but in character column should be only numbers, integers, to be compatible. We are internally doing some, uh, some conversion, but it's not a problem for us. 
and we can use expression to bind this. So we can use as a relationship, for example, substring of one column to full string on other column. And this general relationship is very good to create a relationship between two databases as in our case, because by referential constraints not possible to do it. So by some general relationship we are able to create a consistent data set between two systems, for example, on different platforms. Um, some repeating, we have some tables, we describe the types which we will use in our use case. Parent table is table with primary key, child table is table with foreign key, and the reference table is code table. Uh, do you remember the name of the reference table for customer? Customer table and reference table, code table was state. Perfect. State table is reference table. So again, our use case. So we have state table, reference table, reference table. Reference table, typical is if we create uh, the uh, test data, we need full data from reference table. So all rows from reference table. It's the typical um, uh, typical attribute for reference table. Other referential constraint we have between orders and items. Orders is parent table, items is child table. So it's parent table and child table. And it is general relationship between customer and orders. So we finished database schema subset definition and now we should explain what is traversal pass. If we need to define or generate test data from production, we should define how data from production will be read to generate test data is travel, traversal. So by default, we are starting on parent and go to child. So we create subset of parent rows based on relationships. We get consistent set of child tables, etc. From time to time, we should go back to be fully consistent. So we select some child rows and we need to add, for example, all other child rows and we need to add some parent rows as well. So the traversing can be in both directions. So from parent to child, from child to parent or in both direction. Options, there is waterfall. So top down, which is automatically follow relationships from parent to child. But we have the possibility of reverse waterfall. So it's optionally that the selected child can also select rest of parent rows to get fully referential correct data or we can go again down to retrieve other child rows for selected parent rows from this phase. In our case the condition for data, for subset of data, is that we need to select for our test database data older than uh, 1st uh, July this year, so for first quarter, and we want to select over uh, only first 10 customers. So this condition will be applied to select data, restrict the amount of the data for our test database. So it's table size limit based on this condition and table size limit for uh, this condition. So we create this condition. So now we have DB schema subset and data subset defined by these conditions. And now we can repeat extract steps or steps uh, which will be used to extract data from our database. So if we define all as in previous slide, previous steps, in step one, 
we extract rows from table orders first because our business object is orders. Important stuff table is orders. Selection criteria will be this. In second step, we extract rows from customers based on general relationships defined not on database level but as a general level with condition and in the last step we also extract items based on referential integrity between these two tables and because state is a reference table we automatically extract all rows so now after this we have the full we have the full set of data what is remaining is that our test data created by these steps still contains still contains private data customer number first name last name so we need to ensure or use some tools how to protect this data how to mask this data we can use some function uh, manipulation with strings or use random sequential numbers etc for example for credit card we can generate the number of credit card but with uh, in this case number is different we can see but the condition is that the structure even randomly generate should have still internal logic as number of credit card and together we mask the real name to some different name which is not sensitive so it's data privacy what is important thing if our sensitive data is primary key which is bound to some foreign key if we modify the primary key we should ensure that these changes will be propagated also to foreign key not to loss relation um, re uh, constraint between two, two tables so if we change something here but not in child table we have no relationship without key propagation no relationship between customers and others so the correct way is if we change or mask primary key in parent table we should propagate this also to child table to protect the relationships between parent and child table as well and it's also our key our uh, example we want to uh, we want to uh, mask our customer number which have general relationship with here without propagating we will lose relationship between these two databases was the problem so we should propagate we should propagate uh, this uh, to uh, this foreign key we will use uh, sequential number masking for example instead of some ids we use simple sequential number generator and other masking techniques will be uh, some lookup to some code table with some uh, names first name last names change the real first names last names it will be second step to mask the data so before the uh, showing the practical examples uh, some overview uh, if we use some tool for test data management we have more time for testing because uh, we have less time for preparation of test data if we have some good defined tool and methodology to create test data we increase data quality we have the full uh, maintenance uh, for test data uh, we can define some access rule so we can enforce data ownership and uh, secure the security of the data and uh, we can run multiple sets on the same data and we can create separate sets of test data 
for different applications and the test data are persistent stored or source of the test data are persistent stored somewhere so we can repeat this step creating of test data. So practical demonstration. So first we have some definition of extract process where we define access definition where access definition is relationships for other system, we know that the relationship is between orders and items, uh, table orders and table items, and between orders and customer, we define our we define our general relationships. So here we can see that our access definition exactly define exactly define our relationships in our production database our extract request define extract file where we extract our test data from production we are using some meta language to generate during running every extract process to generate single file not override the old one to be able to go back and repeat uh, the testing with all the data as well we define this definition and for sure we have the possibility to extract only data or only schema or both in our schema both because if we are creating the test data we need first to create also the schema subset of the schema of the database and the last is this. The last is insert. So we used our extract file as an insert process, and during the insert process, we need to mask our data so we can look here for masking Sorry. and our masking is that we are instead of customer number from customer we are propagating sequence number by this function we are generating sequence of numbers and we are using two lookup functions to sub some uh, to some code tables where we have some first names, last names. And by this mapping, we are saying this, that these data during inserting will be modified by, by this rule to the right mask, uh, right mask way. So now first I start the extract process. So we extracted this data, 22 rows. We can look, here's some report. We can look how look like uh, by internal browser, for example. Uh, here is from customer perspective. We extracted this customer. We can add some reference table, for example, this. So our test data will contain such such rows. Yes. So it's our extracted data which will be used during the insert process to our test database. So we run our index. So we inserted. 20 to 52 rows 
to our test database and now we will go to our test platform. I have simple select statement to compare. First is selecting data from our production system and the second step select statement retrieve the data from our test system. We will see that in the production system we have the condition for test data and here is the full so we will see that uh, all data will be will be around so we connect to some database for example to this and we can see that originally with this customer number in the fruit production system or the number first name last name it's production system and after masking and creating, we didn't lose relationships. You can see that still we have this order numbers, but the customer number is as a sequence number, is masked, and the first name, last name is masked to different names. And we use hash lookup functions, which, uh, which ensures that the duplicity in first name, last name will be, will be preserved. That's all what I want to show you. So if you have some questions. <coughs> yes? Um, you were telling us how this uh, data migration is uh, happening. Uh, does this mean that in your company testing is doing this uh, data migration and data migration process? Uh, we, have, we have tools which I show you which are able to do it. But it's your internal tool as a brand. Uh, sorry? It's your internal tool or it's possible to buy licenses? It's possible to buy licenses. Uh, to buy licenses, the licensing model is that the licensing uh, model is defined based on uh, based on test system. So how many processors has test system from this? Yes? Do you have experiences of handling data in cases where some of the data comes from external services and some from the internal databases, and, we, uh, and you need to have uh, data uh, testing that has certain criteria, but it changes over time, so you need to find the, the next piece of data. Do you, you have any examples of what, that kind of case? Like, where you, how would you solve uh, External data means uh, what? Meaning, for, like, different organizations' data. You can only get that basically from a, a, an interface that you get a reply, but you can get to the database level. Uh, With very difficult integrations. Uh, uh, integration can be done on general relationships if we have the possibility to access the external. If the external, um, it depends how to how how external data are are delivered. You can use external data upload to your database and uh, follow the same step. If uh, the external data are delivered by web services or uh, is difficult because uh, this what I show you is exactly only for creating test data from databases where you have full access. Okay, so thank you. thank you very much for your yeah, attention. Thank you very much.